Problem 1.4-2. A rectangular block of rubber is deformed as shown by the dotted line. Determine the average shear strain at corner A. Values shown are in millimeters. The gray block represents the original block of rubber. The dotted line is the deformed shape. We want to find the average shear strain here at corner A. The equation for calculating average shear strain is gamma average, average shear strain is equal to pi halves minus theta prime. Corner A, the original angle, was pi halves. After deformation, it has changed to theta prime. So what we need to do is find the change in angle, and that is represented by this angle here and this angle here. Okay, I've drawn a sketch to help me solve this problem. The change in angle, which is the average shear strain, can be represented by these two triangles. And I'm going to call this angle here alpha, and this angle here beta, and I'm going to calculate their values. Okay, I found my values for alpha and beta. Let's look at it. Alpha is equal to the tangent inverse of the opposite side over the adjacent side. The opposite side is 4 millimeters, the adjacent side is 450. So alpha is equal to 0 0.00889. I've done the same for beta. The opposite side is 2.5 millimeters, the adjacent side is 300. Now I've rewritten my equation for average shear strain. That's equal to pi halves minus theta prime. Now we see that these three angles, alpha plus theta prime plus beta, all sum to pi halves. So I have replaced pi halves with alpha plus beta plus theta prime. We see that the theta primes cancel out, so our average shear strain is equal to alpha plus beta. Alpha plus beta is equal to 0 0.017, and the units are radians. And the problem is done. But wait, there's something that's important to discuss. Alpha and beta are both small angles. Now a small angle is an angle that's approximately less than 0 0.05 radians or 3 degrees. Because they're small angles, that means we can drop the trigonometric sign. So alpha can be calculated as just 4 divided by 450. And you can see that the answer we get is very close to the answer we got when we included the trigonometric sign, the tangent inverse. So the error is very small, so that's great news. We can drop the tangent inverse in this problem. This is useful because uh, now you don't need to worry about converting your calculator from degrees mode to radians mode. Now keep in mind, the small angle rule which allows us to drop the trigonometric sign only works for radians. And now we're done.